Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm working on a Penn Slammer 3 4500, and uh, this one's odd. It's got an unusual noise to it. Almost like a winding sound, not a winding, a winding sound. Well, we're going to take this part of this reel apart. I'm going to guess that it's just run out of oils and greases. Well, we'll find out. Uh, it's always fun to, to kind of explore these and get an understanding of what's going on within the reel. So the 4500 Slammer is a nice reel. And I can see right away as I'm taking this off that uh, it's an ocean reel. And uh, we should be able to see that there's an awful lot of uh, dried salt inside the handle. And if it's inside the handle, it's probably drying out the case as well. So uh, we're going to continue to take these pieces and parts off the exterior. As I do, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of real repair. And uh, if you do subscribe, please hit the notification button. That way you'll see all of the fishing reels that I'm working on. And well, you'll be able to figure out which ones you want to watch. I work on all kinds. Today we're working on a, a pen slammer. Tomorrow it may very well be a... Uh, uh, an issue with a bait caster, could be a, uh, a freshwater pond reel, we don't know, but I see the issue here already. What's that little thing going on here? That's a piece of braid, and uh, braid can be your friend, in this case it can be your enemy. And well, if you look under here, we'll see if we can bring this up a little bit. There's an awful lot, I don't know if you can see it in there, there's a whole, whole spool of braid here. Kind of trying to show it. Old spool of braid wrapped around that axle shaft. So what's happening is when that axle shaft is coming to the bottom, it's bottoming out. And uh, I'm going to bet that's the, the cause of this particular issue. But uh, you know what? We've got the real. When somebody sends in it for service, it gets a complete service. It just doesn't uh, un unspool a braid and say, there, I fixed your reel. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to take the rest of it apart now. I think we can pretty much remove the bottom part of the case so that we can get at that axle shaft and see the culprit there. And this has got three side plate screws as best I can tell. I'm going to take them out and I'm going to lay them on my bench. The reason I lay them on my bench is to make sure that they're all the same size. Those of you that watch the, uh, the videos pretty much know that, but I always welcome newcomers. We're always picking up new subscribers and people that maybe have a a slammer fishing reel in this one and maybe haven't watched Second Chance Tackle before, well, I would rather repeat myself and tell folks to uh, go ahead and uh, measure out those screws and seem redundant to those of you that watch on a regular basis than to not mention it and have somebody, uh, well, somebody put the wrong screw in a, uh, in a place that didn't belong and, well, had a problem as a result. All right, so there's three screws here that we were able to identify. It doesn't look like uh, you would remove this case from the, the top. Let's go ahead and see if we can't remove the case now. And this is a case that will come out that way. Just a, a, they have a seal on this case. So just be careful as you walk it off. There's a rubber seal inside. And uh, the inside, well, we've got some dried grease in there. But other than the dried grease, um, well, so far it looks good. I think these probably are brass gears. Just kind of looking now for the, uh, the setup on this one. This is what I was looking for. I was looking for the screw. This reel has an instant anti-reverse but does not have a uh, override so uh, when you're doing these they're going uh, they're going to just work in the wrong direction so you have to be very careful with these what we're going to do here is we're going to just get that crosswind block to the lowest point so that we can reach that right there we can reach that screw that's attaching the shaft Slammer reels have a nice reputation. You're going to see on a number of pen reels that they're going to tell you that it has a slammer drag system. And the slammer was set up so that 
uh, you could use that in a salt water environment and that you could reduce water penetration in the reel. So the slammer drag is a drag that is actually under the spool as opposed to on top of the spool. Even though it has a top stack, there's also a drag washer underneath here. So uh, when you go to service the drags, you want to get both sides of that done. Well, here's the culprit right here. I'm, I'm willing to bet this is the culprit. You've got quite a bit of braid that's wrapped in here. And that's I believe that's causing it to not come all the way down to the bottom of the reel. And, uh, well, when it doesn't come down to the bottom of the reel, it makes all kinds of noises. But that that's probably the issue on this reel. And uh, well, we'll see when we work that out. So we removed the axle shaft. That gives us access to the ability to remove the rest of this reel, make sure it's nice and clean, and so on. So we have a, a little holding pin here for the crosswind block that's independent. And this is a good place to tell you to take pictures because maybe that pin just fell out there and you're wondering where it loads. Well, there's an inset in the top of the case here and an inset in the bottom of the case here, and that's where that pin is going to go. With that uh, axle shaft and pin removed, we can remove that main gear. And I'm not sure if this has got a screw in there. It does. So make sure you wipe the greases so that you can determine if that uh, crosswind block has a uh, screw holding it in before you go to remove it. You want to avoid damaging pieces and parts. And you can see we've got uh, we've got a fair amount of dirty grease in there. The crosswind block is going to go in with the pin in it. But remember, if it falls out, you know where it goes now because you took a picture. And uh, we've got the main gear here. Notice on the main gear that there is a, um, a shim washer there. That goes between the main gear and the external burring. And this one has dirty grease in it, so it's probably been a while since it's been serviced. I'm going to grab a Q-tip to work that grease out. And uh, if you work a, a, a Q-tip around it, make sure it doesn't leave those cotton fibers in it. And sometimes a hard bristle brush is the best answer to clearing the channels, the teeth on the gear. While you do that, examine all the teeth, make sure that they're in good condition. These are. And we can go ahead and set that one aside. We're going to do the same thing with the crosswind gear that we just took, or oscillation gear, it's sometimes called. This one's clean, there's no, no grease in here at all. Just make sure that they're uniform. Check them this way too, make sure all the points are nice and even, and there's no, uh, no missing points or worn points there. If you got a reel that kind of goes clump clump, sometimes that's the cause of that. Well, let's spin this and see if we get the same issue with uh, the axle shaft and gearing removed. Well, we don't. It's a nice, easy, free spooling reel. So when you're doing problem diagnosis, you can rule that out as an issue in terms of what is the cause of this reel. While you're at it, you might as well check to make sure that the bail trips, and it does. When the bale trips, you do not need to service or remove the bale during the service. You can simply oil the slots and the, uh, the roller, and uh, that's enough. There's only a spring on the one side there. There's no sense opening it up. A spring is not going to benefit from uh, anything. But of course, if you've had this one, and I was just down on the, uh, the beach the other day, if you've had this one in the surf and uh, did what some folks have done, I saw it yesterday, somebody was landing a fish, brought the fish on shore, laid the, uh, laid the rod in the sand while they went to uh, unhook the fish. Well, you know what? Sand is the enemy of reels. Micro salts is the enemy of a reel. And well, if you've done something like that, then you're going to want to make sure that you clear the uh, sands from inside the assembly here. But in this case, this one's working fine, so I'm just going to take some oil. I'm going to oil the seams. I'm going to oil the roller and just work it in and out just to make sure that it keeps those joints clean. 
Sometimes you'll have a sticking bail, and the best answer for a sticking bail is simply using some penetrating oil in the uh, in those slots, and that'll help dissolve some of the uh, salts that are in there or some of the debris. All right, let's see if we can get that off of this deep socket here. We can, and I like to just break the the nut and then do the rest by hand. That gives me better control. All of these pieces and parts, it's off camera, but they're all going into a parts tray. And uh, that's a central repository so that I know where the pieces and parts are when it's time to reassemble the reel. Check underneath here, this is often a forgotten piece. Remember we had a little bit of how a howling going on there? Well, if it's howling, you want to uh, make sure that, well, there's nothing in here because sometimes, just like the line got trapped in the, uh, uh, on the axle shaft, it could get trapped under here as well. There was a burning shield that was sitting on top of this. So I'm going to lay that big part off to the side. I'm going to put the burning shield right here. And uh, now we have the collar that's holding down the uh, pinion gear. So we're going to take that off next. Again, this is some water sealing going on here. And that's always a nice thing in terms of trying to keep the ocean waters and the like out of the, uh, the reel. 4500 is a versatile reel. It can be used on pier. It can be used from surf. It can be used from a boat. And most of the time you're targeting fish up to about uh, 15 pounds maybe. And uh, good, good fighting fish. And the Slammer is a nice reel. I think they retail, I'm going to guess, because I, I should have probably looked it up. I think they're around $150 for the Slammers. So when you look at the pen lineup, you have the entry level, which is the Pursuit. Then you have the Fierce and Battle. And then the Slammer comes on top of that. It's kind of on par with uh, some of the Spin Fishers, but has a little bit of a different design to them. All right, those three come off. And I'm going to leave those screws right in there. Interestingly enough, there's a couple of mounting studs there too. Kind of uh, probably anti-vibration. It's going to go on the outside. It's going to leave those there as is. And we should be able to pull the remaining assembly out. This assembly looks very much like uh, most of the other pen reels. Uh, we have a little rubber collar. Again, that's a O-ring that's going to be for uh, sealing out the waters. We have a carrier with a burring in it that can come out next. We have a anti-reverse clutch and the center ferrule. Notice on this anti-reverse clutch that the metal side of the anti-reverse clutch is facing up. On the bottom side of that, there's going to be a plastic side that faces down. If you took this off and you reverse that, you're not going to have a real spin forward you're actually going to have a reel that's going to spin backwards. And then we have the bottom bearing and a shim washer. So let's just move that shim washer up a little bit. We're going to do the same thing here that we've done with the others. We're going to clean that. We're going to use our brush to brush out any uh, problem areas, any grease that's accumulated and the like. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then we're going to use fishing reel grease. We're going to use pen precision reel grease to re-loop. And since this one had some dirty greases in it that we're taking out completely, we can uh, be generous with the grease on these. All right. Then you just want to clean off the bearings. These are sealed bearings. So you could probably put some oil on it, but it's not going to do anything. Shim washer, bearing collar. Now, anti-reverse clutches do not get greased. This is a friction-driven device. So if you grease it up, it's going to get grease on here. It won't grip the collar and it'll be less effective. There's two sides to this collar that's holding the bearing. One has got an indentation in it. One is flat. That's my little shim washer the indentation side goes down. If you've put this on and you notice there's a gap here, you have that backwards or upside down. All right, 
and our little washer. And our O-ring will go on top of that as it goes in. Before I do that, I want to take that cotton swab again. I want to get off all the greases, dirt, and junk inside the case. Let's do a good cleaning of that. If you didn't remove the pinion gear, you're going to have some greases accumulate in the back of the case here that just won't, uh, you won't be able to reach it. And as we were saying before, it's, so, it's kind of not as bad if it's old grease. But if it's sand or salt or anything else that may have gotten in there, then it becomes a problem. All right, let's go ahead and put this back in then. Seats nicely. Let's go ahead and line this up. Now I've left those screws in, remember. I'm going to remove one of them because I want to make sure that the holes line up. And I kind of eliminate a guessing game here. Well, it's probably just as easy to take these out there. They're bumping up against the shoulders of this where they need to be installed. I generally don't like to leave the small ones around too far because they have a habit of rolling off the, the desk. Alright, let's get that set up again. We'll do one at a time. While I'm doing this, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, maybe you just purchased one and you're a little bit curious about the history of the reel, maybe you just found one at a yard sale, you liked it, uh, you weren't quite sure how you're going to use it, and, and you're kind of wondering about that, all of those uh, are good questions to ask, leave them in the questions. One of the questions you could ask is, why didn't you install that little rubber o-ring? Well, now I will. I'm going to put it back on. All right. After you finish tightening down that assembly, there's one more shim washer that goes on that I post. Then we can install the rotor. We have a little O-ring that goes inside. So Penn has done a pretty good job of borders tightening this one. This is an IPX6, which means it's pretty much uh, covered against your uh, border intrusion. I think the highest is 8, if I remember. All right, so just give it a spin, make sure it spins nicely. I have the cap out, we're ready to install the, the cap. Just align it so that your cap sits over the screw holes. And it looks like we just need a, a minor turn here. get the clearance for those holes. There we go. All right. And there's three screws we'll go into our parts tray to grab for that. One of them is already in here. This would be the second. So I'm thinking that that whistling sound that we had is completely attributed to the braid that uh, we heard knocking around. There's no reason to think otherwise at this point. Just looking for the third screw there. And uh, as I mentioned, you're not just going to say, okay, that was the braid, pull that off and, and run away from the reel. Reels should be serviced on an annual basis. We saw when we opened this reel up and removed the handle, we saw evidence that there was a good amount of uh, salt and debris in that uh, joint of the handle. And that would just tell you, well, you got to go do that. And as we opened up the reel, we saw a lot of ground and dirty grease. 
that's been dried out and so on. So you don't uh, you don't want to take any shortcuts uh, when you're doing this. We have our gear which has been cleaned now. Let's go ahead and grab a brush. I now use an artist brush. Just brush this, spread it around. You want to get grease onto the part that's going to draw the drive the crosswind block. The main teeth, which are going to intersect with the pinion gear, and the shafts where they're going to go into the bearings. Remember, we have a shim washer on this side. I also want to grab that oscillation gear, a little bit onto the back that's going to ride around that stud, into the teeth where they're going to get driven from the back of the main gear. And on the face where that crosswind block is going to ride. When you put the crosswind block in, put it in so that the stud on the block is all the way down low. You saw how we had to rotate that in order to do the um, um, uh, removal of the uh, axle shaft. So you want to make sure you do that. It's a big screw that goes next. that up and then taking care of the rotor let's move over and install the internal gears then so we have our oscillation gear which we've uh, checked and made sure that that's all working we want to get grease onto the back onto the sides and onto the front of this one as it's going to contact all around. If you weren't paying attention before, there is a, a nylon or plastic bushing on the shaft here. Uh, make sure it's there when you go to reinstall. Sometimes uh, it'll pull out inside the gear, sometimes it'll stay on there, and sometimes, well, it'll just go flying. When you go to install your oscillation gear now, make sure that the point where the stud of that oscillation gear is low. Remember when we took this off that the, uh, the shaft had to be all the way down in order to connect that. And then get that wide headed screw and make sure that that tightens down. Once you've tightened this screw on the oscillation gear, go ahead and get your crosswind block. Make sure that you have some grease on the inside of that. And then we can lay the, the pin in I'm going to put the gear side in first, center it over the stud, and then make sure that the shaft is sitting in that cavity. Then go ahead and rotate it, make sure it's working properly. And you want to back this all the way down before you install that main gear. So bring it all the way down so that you're going to have access to that screw hole for your uh, axle shaft. All right, we've greased up the main gear, covered all the main gear pieces. Now we can go ahead and get that axle shaft that had that um, braid all wrapped around it there. I'm going to wipe it off. Put a fresh coat, a very light coat of grease here because when you go through the um, rotor, well, that's going to scrape everything off. If, you're, uh, if you've overloaded it with grease. Bring it back down. Make sure that the hole in the axle shaft and the hole in the crosswind block mesh. And then go get that little screw that belongs in there. Again, that was a little micro driver. These little screws can get funny, so put a little bit of grease onto your driver so that it doesn't fall while you go to mount it. And then go ahead and set that down. You want to make sure that's tightened down all the way. If you leave that head proud, it could hit the back of the teeth of that main gear. You don't want to do that. And I just noticed we had a little bit of, of uh, stuff going there. All right, give it a spin. Well, that's certainly operating nice and relatively easy. So uh, very good. All right, let's go ahead and get the the case. Again, these bearings are sealed, so you don't need to do much with that. As long as you have the case off, grab that uh, 
scrubby pad that uh, I keep by me. Put a little bit of rod and reel cleaner on there. I'll go ahead and polish that case because it's easy to do that in here. Hard to get this top end of that case if that case isn't uh, is on the reel. All right, I'm gonna grab our case and snap that on. Now, if you would remove that border seal um, O-ring, extended O-ring, make sure that you put that back on the case before you put the side plate on. Three screws. Doesn't matter which way they go because, well, they're equidistant apart, so they're going to keep the tension on the case regardless. And one on the other side. Last one. Oops. That was a whoops. Drop the screw there. This one's a little tough for me to get in there. It's kind of tight working condition, so I'm just going to grab a pliers and set it in that way. All right, with that tightened up, I'm just going to keep that scrubby pad. We're going to go clean the, the rotor, clean the other side of the case here. And again, it's kind of a cleaner and a polisher all in one, so it's a nice uh, product. I like it. And uh, let's go ahead and find that handle. I'm going to put a shot of oil on here, see if that can help that, uh, that little salt piece there. This handle also has a, uh, a ball bearing and a knob, so let's go grab, see if we can get that off. Well, not, not right now. Well, we certainly don't have that, uh, that womp womp sound anymore. And uh, let's just put it on and see if that happens with the, the spool as well. Nice, high-quality materials inside. Those look like marine brass gears. Overall, a nicely made reel. And uh, one that uh, I think can keep it serviced and it's going to keep you fishing. All right, let's see how we did. Yeah, we eliminated that womp womp. There's a little bit of barring noise, a little gear noise in there. I'm sure that's from use, but overall, a nice uh, spinning reel without the uh, uh, the dramatic uh, background noise that was happening with it. So uh, there's a little bit more for me to do. I'm going to do the uh, the drag washers on this before I uh, return it to its customer. But you know this video has been lasting a long time, so I think we're going to stop it here. For uh, everybody who's a first responder, essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.